Hey guys. I look at the map. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk with you through your problem, uh, your practice and problem solving skill uh, paper, just to help you understand what we're going to do with multiplication. And you're like, well, Miss Moore, I know how to multiply. I, you, you do. You do. But there's a few tricks that we need to teach. All right. So if you look right here, multiplying with multi-digit numbers, y'all have been used to multiplying by one digit by one digit. We're going to throw you for a loop here. We're going to multiply by multiple digits. So if we look right here at example one, you see that it says multiply 24 times 35. Now, one of the things that is a pet peeve of mine is when we multiply or add, the big number needs to go up top, but I'm letting it go. All right, so the very first thing, you have to line up the digits just like you do with addition or subtraction. You line the digits up according to place value. So my ones are lined up and my twos are lined up. Easy peasy. All right, now... What we do now is we start to multiply. You're going to multiply 24 times 5 because 5's in the 1's place. You start at your 1's place. So I'm going to go 5 times 4, and we know that is 20. Okay? I know that's 20. Okay? Now, because of the whole place value deal, I can only have one digit per place value. So what happens is I have 20. Basically, if you want to think about it this way, pretend uh, when we have our unit blocks and our the sheets and everything like that, when we have ones, they're those unit cubes, right? All right, here's the deal. How many unit cubes are in one rod? Remember that raw is a straight line? That's right, there's 10. So think of it this way. If 5 times 4 is 20, and we're in the ones place, that means I have 20 unit cubes. Now, these 20 unit cubes can't stay 20. But if I put the unit cubes together, I get two tens. So what happens is I drop my zero down, and I put a 10, where that hand was, I put a 10... I put the 2 over the 10's place. Now, just give me a second. Now, I've multiplied my 1's place times my 1 place. Now, I'm going to go multiply my 1's place times my 10's place. So, I have 5 times 2. 5 times 2 is 10. That's it. 5 times 2 is 10. But, we have our little dangly number up here. And what do we do with it? We just add it. 5 times 2 is 10, plus 2 is 12. Now, I've made it a habit of as soon as I use that dangling number, I exit out so I don't use it again, because when it comes to doing the next part, it can get kind of confusing. So, my answer for 24 times 5 is 120. Now, I'm not finished because I have to go to my tens place, okay? Now, when we go to our tens place, that means you are multiplying now by not just 30, not just the 3, you're actually multiplying by 30. Because if you were to break this number up, you could say 24 times 30 and then 24 times 5, and you'll get the same answer if you add them together. So basically, you're saying 30. No, you're not. You're saying, yes, you are. You're saying 3 times 4. 3 times 4 is 12. We know that. But here's the deal. You can't put your answer in the ones place. Because we've already done our ones. We are starting in the tens place. So that means our number has to start in the tens place. So we have to put a zero right here. That zero is very important. Because that can change your answer. Always, always, always. we got to get into the habit, and we will get into a habit of it, believe me, of putting that zero down in the ones place when we're multiplying by the tens. Now we just continue to multiply. We have z uh, 2. I'm sorry. No, we don't. 
we have three times four is 12. So we put our two and we kicked up the one because you have 12 unique blocks or unique cubes. I can make one rod out of them and I have two left. So I take those two and I kick up the one. So then I'm gonna go three times two is six. And then I add my dangling number, which is a one. So three times two is six plus one is seven. So 720. I'm not done yet. These are what we call our partial products. That means you, you're not, you haven't got the answer yet. You're partially there. So what we do is we add our partial products together and we get 840. So the answer is 840. I know that was a long drawn out example to do one problem, but believe me, I'm still working on it with fifth graders. So, example. This is a four digit number by a two digit number. What we did is you have two times eight, okay? Two times eight is 16, right? But remember, I can only put one digit per place value. So I'm going to keep the six because it's in the ones place and kick up the one. So write the six down. Any number times zero, we know that is zero. So two times zero is zero plus one is one. Now, I dropped my one down. Two times five is 10. So I'm going to drop my zero down and kick up my one. Just continue going. Two times three is six, but I have my dangling number up here. Sorry, I have my dangling number and six plus one is seven. So the answer ends up being 7,016. Now we will continue to go over this and over and over and over until you're sick of it. But if we continue to go over, over, over it, you may be sick of it, but you'll be able to do it just like that. And you'll come back over here and teach me how to do it. Or, you know, you can help little brother to little sister, even older brother, older sister. I've had students do that too. So we need to continue practicing our multiplication facts because that will help you tremendously. You will have a second video with the work from Monday's practice and problem solving. I just wanted to do a video of this to just give you an example of how we're going to work with multiplication. All right, I'll talk to y'all later. Stay out of trouble. And that's it.